Hello and welcome back to Darren Doing. I'm Will Hester and I'm joined by the brilliant Ben Bowman. Ben, fucking did Brentford up, didn't we? Did him right up the bum. <laughs> right. Just you thought, oh yeah, you want a little goal in the first 20 odd seconds? Yeah, you can have that. And then wallop. Have that. We touched them there. We touched them there. there and touched there. them there. The bum hole. The bum hole. <laughs> <laughs> it was uh, incredibly satisfying. I always like beating Brentford because... I feel like they're always really difficult yeah. to beat anyway. Uh, and um, last year, the shit housery that they kind of put us through was just like one of the most draining games of football I've ever watched. But yeah. Saturday did not go. Saturday, I think, went the complete opposite to how I expected it to go. I was coming into it going, I think this is going to be Spurs' hardest game of the season. And we just yeah, pulled yeah, yeah. their little pants down and just turned around and gave them a good little <laughs> Roger in, despite the fact they went 1-0 up in the first 20 seconds. I know. That, I was gonna say, like, I know we're back to winning ways, but when Embuemo scored that goal after like twenty seconds, <laughs> Get you him think out. like this he is has just... to go, blood. <laughs> yeah, yeah this... he has to go. Uh, Allegri, blood. <laughs> yeah, uh, Massimiliano Allegri. <laughs> I've, I've got from my sources that Massimiliano Allegri is coming. <laughs> what well, I actually because I saw we one 0 down, and I was like, oh my god. Um, and then obviously it was all rosy on the other side. Yeah, I fucking smashed them up after. But um, before, actually, uh, before we get on to City, because I want to talk about that, that Arsenal hate watching. Oh, <laughs> but um, in Buemo, I'm saying this now. I can see him at Spurs or Liverpool. Mm. He has all the like minerals. Yeah, yeah. For one, that goal was ridiculous. Unbelievable goal. He man. has all the mineral minerals to. Be, you know when we're talking about like game changers, how old is he? Twenty four. Yeah. I mean, by he, the time he's he like twenty seven, twenty five, but he's. Oh, I, my, he, of, I feel like he's been around for like five years as well. I think. Yeah, I think it's because of his hairline as well. <laughs> like, yeah. I think yeah, he yeah. he's deceptively. It's like I I I was talking before the game about like oh you know it's gonna be Brentford love to I think they've got the most like fifth most amount of long balls in the the Premier League they'll just punt it long you know try and get in our half and play from there and obviously they've lost yeah. their target man in Wissa. Someone said to me on Twitter, like, Wister is five foot nine. I was like, is he? I was like, <laughs> Bueno's like deceptively old or deceptively yeah, young, yeah, yeah. sorry. And Wister's like deceptively tall or yeah, short. Yeah, yeah, I, mean, I mean, five foot yeah. nine is not short, but you know, I was like, I've got it Fact wrong. Like, yeah, got it. How old are you? Not like, anything short to me. Uh, to <laughs> We're all the same height when we're lying down. You exactly. know what I mean? Do you know my girlfriend said that to me when we first got together and I didn't really know whether she was like, that was like a a euphemism sort of thing to be like, you know, about sleeping (laughs) together or whether that was just like a sort of nugget of information that I I thought she was, I thought she was telling the truth. (laughs) I I thought you were like fucking sweating when she said that. Yeah. I was like, are we? I was like, hold on a minute. I was like, lay there. (laughs) There. But no, she just wanted Um, a bit. She just wanted some. (laughs) She just wanted a bit of Big Ben. That's what what I heard. Oh, Um, Uh, yeah, Mbuemo, mate. Uh, He so Mbuemo, uh, he he, he's the type of player that no one, everyone's like, yeah, he's a good player, he's a good player. And then, like Jota, when he left Wolves to uh, Liverpool, Liverpool sign him, and then he'll become like a game changer, yeah, and like a proper, proper good. And then people are like, oh, why don't we sign him? And and I, I, I think he. Fits the way we pl- want to play perfectly. I know he's not w- like one v one dribbling type, but he's so direct. He's he 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 is the his understanding of like game state is really good as well. His strength is what surprised me against yeah. us. He he was there shining light, and and his finishing is getting a lot better. Before I know Vicario denied him in like well, we one on one, yeah, but yeah. still it wasn't a bad but finish. It, just, it weren't like, a bad finish. It was good save. A low and hard cross keeper, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, I like. But, him, I, yeah. I, I, I'm gonna be keeping my eyes on him because also his his durability is there. I think. Is yeah, it? I was getting well. Yeah, he's I think, injured a lot. No, I think. Well, yeah, he's had a few injuries, but I, uh, durability also in the sense that it's I think not like he, Neto. No, 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 it's not. Also, he I think he works really hard. He's very tenacious, isn't he? Like, yeah. not the sort. Yeah. He's a sort of winger. If you were a fullback, they're just like I don't want to play against this guy. And also, he can play central. Yeah. He's quite versatile. Like he pretty much played for up front the other day, didn't he? Um, no, I like. Him and more. he's done us a few times. Like yeah. In our stadium, he always seems to score. So. Yeah, the one we lost on the um, Mason. Yeah, you're yeah, right. yeah. But 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 the Arsenal game, it mm. was the most stressful yet satisfying hate watch I think I've had watching Arsenal. 
Like yeah. I know they didn't. I know. I know it was a draw, but Erling Haaland. Can I just say? I just want to show you. Grand. <laughs> I want to shake his hand. hand. I want to shake his hand. <laughs> Mate, what a what a fucking guy. Like, oh, I love I actually just, love he was him. gunning for everybody, wasn't he? He was gunning for a 17-year-old kid, their fucking dickhead manager, and Gabriel Jesus, who he took the number nine shirt of and was like, basically, get the fuck out of my house. Do you know what I mean? Who the yeah, fuck is you? Score goals, mate. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. He's <laughs> also the, the way he, like, the, I loved that goal that he scored as well. It's just like because they pulled Arsenal all over yeah. the place, and then he just yeah, yeah, yeah. The, 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 no, I think someone said it. it actually might have been Paul Merson said it after the game. Like, no other striker scores that goal because no other striker probably stays on side. Like the the awareness that he had was just like yeah, unbelievable. But yeah. after the game, that was just do you know what? It was even more stressful because it did you, where you where you live? Did it piss it down with rain on Sunday? Um, I can't remember. The well, only mate. thing I could hear, I could, the only thing that was raining was um, Arsenal tears. Arsenal fans tears. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. raining now. <laughs> uh, we had uh, literally in in Hertfordshire. We had like I reckon it was like about a month's worth of rain in one day. And really, during the game, I'm not kidding. In the second half, it was absolutely pissing it down, and our garden completely flooded. So we were like trying to trying to do. We had all washing on the line that was like all come down. Then the rain started leaking through our oh, ceiling. Hell. All while Arsenal were defending a fucking low block, a 6 3 0 with 10 men. And I was just like, I've had enough of this. And then we yeah, yeah, finally, yeah. the rain stopped. We sat down, the roof stopped leaking, and John Stones put it in the back of the net. It was like, it was that's like the football gods telling you everything's going to be all right. Yeah. Uh, it th- was. Th- th- also, Harlan lobbing the ball at Gabriel's back of the back of his head. I want to and his head. him leaving one on party as well, like straight off the equalizer. Like, bosh. And Salibur in, and and oh, in the first half as well. He did him as well, didn't he? He just ran straight. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's yeah. All, that, but I also want to play stupid games and go and fucking start barging people from the first minute. And then when they get it back, they don't like it. Yeah. yeah, it was atrocious. Like I think they're, I think they're even gonna get a talking to it. Hey, from the Premier League, just how fucking what the dark like, arts? The, the sh- yeah, the dark art. The dark art. They were just being fucking so petulant. And yeah, and the funniest thing is all that, all that for what? For I know you got one point. Is that same but... as what we got there last year, wasn't it? I think we're actually you know playing football, like going out and playing. Yeah, oh you know, because yeah, like, yeah. basically having Emerson and Davis at centre back is pretty much like having ten men. So we went there and played. Oh, we played. Yeah. Played out from the back, and, and we got we scored three goals. What would you rather do that? Stink the place out. Don't even touch the ball. Have two players that didn't even complete an accurate pass over a whole ninety minutes. Yeah, yeah, and still come away with the same point. Or fucking take it to them, entertain the fans. Yeah, exactly. I know there is this conversation about the the sustainability of of either way, but we had that under Mourinho and Conte that that and i'm looking at the underlying stat underlying stats i think we've conceded 3.3 xg open play goals in our last five games yeah and i just saw a stat as well arsenal only brentford have conceded more shots on their goal than arsenal this this season what sounds sustainable i know the results say something different but remember i, I like do you remember i'll start under like uh, for example, like Nuno, or or when we're playing, when we're winning under Mourinho, we were getting results, but the eye tests weren't lying. We were yeah, getting really battered wasn't. every yeah. game. I I wouldn't be surprised, and I I think they'll get injuries because it's a long time coming. Them starting to fatigue and that, but I wouldn't be surprised if start go, if shit starts going like hitting the fan uh, like as we progress through the season for Arsenal because mm. the underlying numbers aren't there, and this whole sort of pep disciple. That's a Fugazi. F- yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> Fugazi. <It's> Fugazi. <laughs> the, the he's a he's a Mourinho disciple. I don't know when he, Mate, he spoke to Mourinho. Do you remember when Mourinho was? <laughs> yeah, yeah. What well, Tony Pulis? <laughs> yeah, Pulis. Yeah, he's he's anti football Arteta, and he's a dickhead as well. So hopefully yeah. it starts going down a little. But anyway. Let's move on to... I was going to say, it's quite a good segue into the game. and Also quite a good segue into like last night where Ange got asked about, do you think we should be a bit more pragmatic by a fan? He was like, yeah, no, I totally get you, mate, but we're not going to do that. (laughs) (laughs) That's literally what he said. He was like, this is the Spurs way and we ain't going to fucking do that, mate. People didn't like that, to be fair. No, they didn't like that, but I I, I like it. Sorry, I don't know what... I was going to show you something. Oh, it's here. Oi. Oi. I need to actually read Where'd it. You get that? That's uh, fucking massive, that book. I know. It's, it's not actually that like long. It's a 
For anyone that doesn't know what this is, if you listen to Fighting Cock, you'll definitely know what this is because Flav actually did, I think, an interview with Vince Regari on the lab who wrote this. Um, go and get it on Amazon. It's got, I haven't read it yet, but it's... Uh, yeah. Um, nice. Uh, did you read... Fun. Did you read Ange... Uh, the last book about Ange? No. The, uh, I can't remember... The Evolution was one, was it, I think? I can't remember. It's just oh, something it's cold. I got it for Christmas. I'm pretty sure um, the extra inch interviewed it. Maybe interviewed him about it, or maybe right. Flav interviewed it. I can't. I can't remember. He did get interviewed. I heard about it. Yeah. Um, and right. so I, 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 I've read that. That was. This, I haven't actually finished that, but because uh, fuck me, I'm so. I can't concentrate for too long. I, I got a book yet for a holiday. I read three pages Mate, and i was like so fuck long. me i've done so much reading <laughs> yeah oh, i've got it more for the aesthetic of the holiday book <laughs> yeah you're going to wh smith just before you take off <laughs> i read the blurb and then i was like yeah. like talking to my girlfriend like analyzing it being like yeah it's really interesting this like oh, yeah and then i was like fuck that i'm not fucking reading that yet <laughs> yeah um, i'm not fucking reading but <laughs> i'm not fucking reading <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but uh yeah moving on to like brentford do you think that was our best performance of the season so far or like, cause it is exactly what we wanted. Do, do you think in comparison to the Everton game, cause I think Everton and Brentford are only two wins this season. Yeah. What, which one was better? What were you, what, cause I think Everton, that was a like almost perfect, perfect performance, but Everton are fucking wank and they have been this season. So like, it was yeah, hard to wank. sort of, it was hard to sort of like get at how good we were and how bad they were. But at Brentford, They've caused some problems um, this season. They called they caused Man City problems last week. Yeah, and we fuck wiped the floor of them apart from the first twenty seconds. We it was a really really positive performance for it. Yeah, there was it was definitely it was definitely better than Everton, hundred um, percent. Yeah, I said it. I, I said it. I, I think it was one of our best performances under Ange. Full stop. Um, I thought it was really really positive. Um, it was funny, isn't it? Like the perception of the Brentford thing. Like when last week, when they caused City a load of problems, it was like, and Guardiola was coming on after the game talking about how much they had to suffer in that game. But then we beat Brentford and some of our fans are just like, well, they're just a mid-table side. You shouldn't get so excited, you know, which they are that. But Brentford have been notoriously difficult to beat and their record against good teams is pretty good. Um, especially when yeah. you go 1-0 down yeah, in the is. first 20 seconds. And Brent, when they've sat in the stinkiest low block that we've seen all season, pretty much all the stats pointed towards how this was going to be such a struggle for Spurs, but the game didn't pan out that way at all. It was incredibly satisfying. Um, and some incredibly brilliant performances from players. that I think we've been asking for it from as well, which made it, yeah, I think it couldn't yeah. have gone much better really, because I think as well, like nah. we, we went through moments in that game. Where we Look, I would have loved it if we'd gone and beaten four or five nil and just not had to worry. And we're brilliant and scored great goals and Slanky got a brace or whatever, but that's not Premier League football. That's not reality, is it? If you, you That's know, FIFA. yeah, and also you want, you want, you know, we've, I think we've been through enough so far in the season to show that we can have a lot of possession and, um, and dominate teams. But it's always been in, like, you think of the Leicester game, for example, it was one moment where they got back into it. They were starting to build pressure, but they didn't really have many other chances. You know, they took their one moment. Um, Newcastle, again, kind of similar. Whereas Brentford, it was there was a period in that second half where it was a bit of sustained pressure, and we got through that. We got through it, and it wasn't like, you know, they were they were peppering us. It was just like, okay, we're just going to have to sit in here and be patient and be calm and hold what we've got, and then go. I and mean, that's what we did. I thought it was a really mature, satisfying performance. I thought Madison was excellent. Like, just not just in yeah. terms of like, I tweeted it out um, when I was when I was doing my video on Sunday. The brilliant thing about that performance from Madison was the fact that. You know, it's, it's like for, for me, for example, when you're going through, uh, right, I've got to watch the game again because I want to pick out bits and where did he do that piece of skill or where did he do that thing where he won the ball back? Didn't have to do that. You could have just watched the highlights to realise how good he was in that game because everything yeah. that he did resulted in a shot or an offensive action or something like that. It was all of note. It was all with purpose. He was so like aggressive instrumental instrumental yeah. but he was aggressive it was like he was yeah yeah yeah. he was playing i think he was playing with a bit of spite madison and i like that a bit like johnson in a way you know like over the last couple of games that we spoke about like i think madison you know he's off the ball work was unbelievable in terms of winning the ball back he's reading of everything like for the second goal where he goes to faint to kind of cut off one passing lane trying to press and then he actually goes to the right one you know, like yeah. wins the ball back. He just everything. Both both the first two goals where he wins the ball back, you can see it in his head. He's five seconds ahead of everything in terms of his off the ball stuff. So, 
really, really satisfying. And yeah, I think we all thought it was going to be really difficult, but I thought it was very mature. I thought that first half was some of the best football we've played under Ange. Best pressing. Pressing was fantastic. Like, especially when, again, and it just shows you, and I'm sure we're going to talk about it, but, you know, there's been questions about Ange and his ability to adapt and all these different things. Played totally differently pretty much on Saturday in terms of like yeah. the fullback staying higher and wider and out of the way and a bit deeper as well. Sorry, not not necessarily yeah. higher, actually. Deeper and wider. Um, a doggy going on the overlap, allowing Sonny to get in the inside channel to get him where he's best. Um, that freeing up a bit more space for Madison. But again, it was Madison's off the ball stuff and his ability to drive from that deeper position. Again, I think we've questioned, and I've said it multiple times, it's like you feel like with Madison... He's probably more that out and out number 10. You want to get him as close to Solanke as possible to kind of forge that relationship and create the chances. But everything he did, when he's terms of his dribbling from deep and his ability to progress up the pitch with the ball, it was just, it was such a brilliant team performance. And I think it's left us with some questions now of like, because I think after the Everton game, we came away from that thinking, well, in terms of setting up with Kulu and Madison in the two tens, um, you know, is this, is this a, is this a, uh, is this a blueprint for like low block teams? And obviously Brentford are the lowest, but they didn't play like that on Saturday. They tried to play out from no. the back. And that's what we pounced upon. Our, our, their weakness played into our hands. And, you know, we are the most intense pressing team. We are the best pressing team in the Premier League. And that's it not just... relentless. Everything. It was relentless. And do you know what? What you kind of said something earlier where about Mourinho, where you were talking about the eye test. And I think the eye test for Spurs in terms of what we've been watching so far this season is that we have been better. And a, a lot of the stats are backing that up. But this was a day where it all kind of came together. That's why it was so satisfying. And, you know, we can yes, we conceded. Yes, we had a couple of hairy moments caused by our own real undoing in terms of the goalkeeper. But it was just it felt like a day where everything just kind of came together in a, in a game where he really needed it the most. After yeah, the yeah, yeah. So I just, it yeah, was satisfying. Well. Super, super satisfying and really, really positive. Yeah. Well, you look at a, you look at like every good team, and you think to make a good team, you need you need a spine, you need a core. But every team needs a heartbeat, and Madison for us is that heartbeat. And when he's ticking, that's when we're playing our most fluid um, uh, game, and everyone's in that sort of flow state. And that's what Madison was. I think the primary reason for us, our intensity and and our tempo was through him, and just what whatever he was on. He treated that game like he treats a Sunday roast. He was the main man, <laughs> yeah, and he and he was almost given complete freedom. Like his movement was fluid. He drift out wide. He, we actually he he'd also sit deeper than the front four, sort of in tangent. The front four were sort of in tangent, and they would push the highest. Yeah. And and when they would when when we'd break, they would be the ones pushing forward. And Madison would sort of just sit just below, just behind them, but still close enough to sort of link up and and play intricate passes but yeah Kulu, Kulu Son, Solanke and Johnson they would they would like bomb forward and he just it, but like you're saying the aggressiveness it, it was a disciplined performance from him as well he yeah. drift out wide as well he, he had that freedom to and the fluidity to drift out wide and, and link up with with a doggy and, and Son and what what the left hand side was so much better and aesthetically pleasing in this game and it and the, and it worked and it, it 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 clicked because i think madison would come wider i think harry brooks the golf and like on a uh, just go off on a rant a little bit harry brooks was saying that madison on form can play anywhere on the pitch his yeah. his agility and his turns and and how he protects the ball he can play as a touchline winger obviously maybe that's not where you want him but yeah, because he's not he can, necessarily getting the best out of him but he could like no we know he can because he fuck he did Pedro Porro in his Premier League debut made everyone doubt him? Him and Harvey Barnes. He, yeah. he when when they teamed up him on the left, him coming to the left, allowing Son to invert because Son is not a touchline hugging the width player. He needs to be he needs to be more central, but, but obviously not striker. And a doggy could invert, and the, the zones were freed up, and and they they had they had, they had their own spaces, and it, and it just worked. And him yeah. coming wide, and then he would sort of he'd just be that sort of orchestrator and yeah it was a really dis disciplined performance he was he was tracking back and like defending to getting stuck in I've, i haven't seen him like that before but he was nice. in such a creative flow state just pulling the strings and he was trying things like it wouldn't come off all the time um but it didn't matter because he wasn't hiding he, no, he, he, he wasn't he wasn't hiding he, he he was giving me the book if something didn't come off give me the ball i'll try something else and that's what we want from madison the, the frustration we've had is that he 
he has all the talent in the world, but the consistency levels aren't there. But in this game, that's exactly what we know he can do. But he yeah. did it to the to the the highest highest level because he was just trying things and not hiding. Okay, give me the ball again. He tried things and and then it was coming off and and you could see his confidence levels just getting up, like just increasing and increasing. Do you think that was the, his best game for us, or do you and and do you think that's the sort of game this season that sort of set him off now, his confidence off now, and he's going to just carry that on and push through? Or, or do you think we've been a bit harsh in his performance this season? Because I saw on Match of the Day, I know Danny Murphy, you can't really hear, you don't you don't want to listen to anything he fucking says, but I think Danny Murphy said, like, he's been Spur, one of Spurs' best players this season, yeah. but it hasn't really worked for Spurs. And I was thinking, have I been a bit harsh on him? Because I've been, I've been, Kulu's been the standout out of the two of them, I think. Just because he's come into a new position, it's exciting, it's new, and when it's more noticeable. But Madison, he didn't, he's never played like how he did against Brentford this season. But if you think about when he came on against Coventry, Leicester, Everton, um, I just don't think I watched the Newcastle game. But, uh, but uh, do you it think we've been harsh on him? Well, yeah. He's good. Do you think we've been harsh on him, or do you think we just expect more? We expect these performances from him. That's where the frustration comes. I think it's a. Li- I think it's a, uh, not to sit on the fence, but I think it's a bit of everything you've just said because it's like you, you, you expect more because you know he's that good. You yeah. want more because you know he can be that level, but yeah. you're harsh, and and that's why you're harsh on him. But then at the same time, I think. Sorry, my dog's going mental. Is that Dexter? Uh, no, it's not. It's not. He's um. He's. He, he is incapable of being that loud. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's, it's our, it's our dog. He's like that. Dexter's like that Arsenal Academy player, step like pi- pi- piping up to Harland. <laughs> yeah, and yeah, and our dog is the one. It, our dog is Harland. He is Harland. <laughs> yeah. Um, but uh, what was I going to say? Oh, yeah, you're, you're, some... you're harsh on him because you expect more, and you 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 know it can be that level because he just showed you it on Saturday. Um. I think I was I was frustrated with him last week because in a in a North London derby I just didn't think that I think it was a build up of stuff of just like okay we've seen these performances but I like I just want you to grab the game by the scruff of the neck like I want you to go and grab the yeah. game by the scruff of the neck which I don't think he's done since that that run of those first ten games but also saying that I think Saturday was a better performance than any of those performances he put together for us in those first ten games of the season last I think year so. I think yeah. it was like don't get me wrong like. Um, Burnley away scored a belter and was influential in that and you know he was just good in all of the games like he was just he was just good but it came at a point where it was easy to be good because we were playing well and um, everything was flying everything was working for Spurs to do that to play like that in a game where there's pressure on Tottenham from the outside in terms of the noise from the fan base as well especially after a terrible performance against Coventry um, that we saw you know, he. I thought he was. I thought it was unbelievable. Uh, it was definitely his best game. Like I said, it was just. I said it earlier. Like, yeah, everything that he did resulted in an. It resulted in something like. It was just. It, it couldn't get him off the ball. They were fouling him all the time. It was like you know how yeah, Grealish, like kicked. when Grealish has one of those games, it's like. Yeah, Gre- yeah, yeah Grealish yeah, yeah. gets kicked every week. Madison's again very similar player. Always gets kicked, and they just can't get near him. Absolutely can't get near him. Yeah. And they have to kind of resort to that. But it was you could tell like. I think Ricky might have said this actually earlier on when I was listening to Fighting Cock, but you can tell that that was a, a, such an. When I talk about having a, him having a moment, like I want him to, you know, I want him to, of course, go and score a last minute winner or something in the North London derby or something like that, of course, right? But you can't just expect these things. But that goal felt like that. And that his celebration, yeah. sort of taking the shirt off and then soaking it all in, almost felt like a weight had been lifted. It almost felt like a bit of relief. And I think there's a. Yeah, it's provided a good platform because I don't think with with Madison to be fair to him as much as sometimes he can frustrate me and like I said I think I only get annoyed and frustrated at him because I know how good he can be. It's not like I'm expecting something that's not in his ceiling. Like, like I think, how we thought Emerson should perform at right back. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I, I think I think with um I think with Madison it's like I don't feel, I think he you know, it's a bit of a cliche but I think he's his biggest critic, isn't he? He will know that he needs to do more. He will know that. Yeah. And I think that's what I said. That I think that that game he almost played with that bit of spite on Saturday. I think he did. Like it was like I'm going to show people and I'm going to really step up here because he was at the center of absolutely everything. You know, yeah, like we yeah. w- with that first half against Leicester on the first game of the season where he played really well. It was like, oh my god, he's back. Like and then sort of faded a little bit and 
Saturday was just for 90 minutes, he was just relentless. And uh, like I said, obviously, it was great. Unbelievable finish for the goal. But and and some lovely moments, like Gascoigne esque moments where he kind of gets in between players and gets away from them and, you know, plays a pass off the back of it and runs and commits people. But it was the thing I was impressed with the most was the was the first two goals, winning the ball back for the first two goals. How he's just ahead of the play, how he's so he knows what's coming, he knows what he wants to do. Um, just so aggressive to get there. And he's, I thought his off the ball work was fantastic. I was looking through while you were talking there just before, like, and I, I obviously did a bit about it after the game. I was looking at the average positions in the team on Saturday, and you, you, like you're so right in terms of where he picks the ball up on that left hand side. He's the deepest of the front five behind Solanke, Son, Kulu, and Johnson. And it got me thinking about uh, it. Got me thinking about next week. Like I, I've always thought, I've always said this this whole time, and I really, really hope it comes true because I kind of want to say like. Well, I knew this was going to happen. Spurs can kill United next week. Yeah, oh. you have been saying this for, for the last couple of weeks. Yeah, and yeah, I'm, I'm, it's I'm, that old traffic though. That's your my only worry. Yeah, of course. But I'm looking at Liverpool. I'm looking at Liverpool, that Liverpool game when they went there, and look, they've got world class, ruthless attackers that we don't have, but we've got an attack that can really hurt teams yeah. and be ruthless on their day. Whereas Liverpool, I think it's a on a more consistent basis. If that day comes against Manchester United, because again, like with Spurs is high press, we let we can be happy to let them have the ball like we were with Brentford. I think having Madison and Kulusevski there with Madison as that slightly deeper player against teams that are vulnerable on transition because United want to, they want to press high, but they want to, they don't want to, they don't want to get high at the pitch. They don't want to play with a high line and get high up the pitch. You know, they're kind of caught in this middle, yeah, 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 middle sort of state of like, okay, and leave so much space in the center of the pitch and allow. If you break United's press, which isn't the hardest thing in the world to do, especially with the quality of that Romero and Van der Ven have got in terms of when it comes to breaking the lines, you're leaving a huge gap in midfield. And if you can create these situations like we were regularly doing on Saturday, where mm. you've got Kulusevski, Solanke, Son, Madison, and Johnson running at your back four. Spurs are going to score a lot of goals like that. And I, I think it can all kind of come together against United if if we are that bit more clinical. So I think that Saturday was kind of a good audition almost in a way for that game. Could be 6-1. Could be another 6-1. <laughs> it could, could be another yeah. six one. I'm, I'm going there with a lot of confidence. Um, I really... What, you're going? Yeah, yeah, I'm going to the game, yeah. Oh, nice. Manchester. I'm going... oh, I'm, How I far away of... is that from you? Uh... Well, I just, I'm just outside London, so I just get the train into London and then go oh, up yeah. from like Houston. But I think I, I kind of meant that figuratively, but I am literally going as well. Oh right. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it makes me like Saturday was almost kind of a good audition for that in a way. Like, okay, we'll you let you have the ball, we'll let you try and play out, and we're going to absolutely pounce. And then once we're able to play through your press at the other end of the pitch, then when you've got you know, that was the most direct. I think we've probably. I, I think that was probably the most direct. I think I've seen us be under Postecoglou. Yeah, yeah. no, the the pace of our every attack of of one two passes give and go. You know how? And I'm going to get onto this. This is actually a question, um. So I might save it. But I was just. It's it, this is an insight. Man City, what they weren't doing against Arsenal was low block. Is what we were doing. The, the sort of one just popping it about movement runs from deep. Um, one two is just it just constantly trying to get players out of position when they were set. That's what Spurs were doing. And yeah, Madison was at the, the heart and soul of it. Um, and he was popping up everywhere, out wide, deep, everywhere. He, he was brilliant. And what I think you said it, you said it how, I, I can't remember the, like how you exactly said it, but you, when the going gets rough, Madison does hide a bit. Mm. So that's why it was the moment, this game, in where we are in this sort of, it, the state we're in, in terms of results not going our way, you you're surprised at Madison's how good Madison was and the confidence he was showing out of, and I think you would say maybe out of thin air, but yeah, no, he, he has grown into this season, yeah, and maybe this is the one where he just boom like explodes from here, but you you never know. This is this is the thing he needs to follow this up now against Man United, like you're saying, it's an audition almost to how we how we can play against Man United and he has to be that be that again. That's the levels he's set from. Um and the levels that Anne just set and I, I that's another thing I'll talk about because um uh we'll get into that in a minute. But was uh, uh, two players that scored and you were so happy for him 
uh, Solanke and Johnson as well. That front four past Madison was obviously Son, Kulusevski, um, Solanke and Johnson. They seemed a lot more intangent with each other, and and they, and they were their link up was there, and their sort of they were on the same page when they were pressing everything. It it, it looked like it was starting to click. Yeah. Um. Obviously, it must be hard for him because Solanke was injured for the first what three games of the season. Um, and and this is the player they brought in to play a certain way to press from the front and he's not there and now it's like the constant where results are getting rough you have to you have to get performances and they hadn't really played with each other but it looked like it's, it's, things are starting to click what do they do well in this game Johnson and Solanke um because they they look a little bit different they look sharper they look more direct do you think do you think it was just that or do you think there was more of a positional change if you know what i mean tactical tweak anything like that uh, not necessarily directly for them too but i think they both benefited as a result of the overall tactical change especially yeah. johnson to kind of like you know again poro stayed that little bit sort of wider and almost out of his way and then when we counter attack poro wasn't really in the picture poro didn't really have anything to do in terms of an attacking sense. Yeah, he carry the ball yeah. forward, he play nice passes, but he wasn't taking up those sort of spaces because you've got, you know, I, I think, I said this before, but I think Kulazewski and Johnson is such a nice little, they've got such a good understanding of each other and where they want to be, but yeah. sometimes it's almost like yeah. when you add a third player to that mix, it can all get a little bit in the way. More because I think Poro's getting in the way of Kulazewski most of the time, to be honest. Um, yeah. And that's maybe not fair on Poro. And I think then that him just sort of staying out of the picture allows Kulazewski and Johnson to kind of continue to um, develop that relationship, which I both think they've got. Because Kulazewski, it wasn't really evident in this game because he didn't really need to do it because the game was a bit more end-to-end, -end, a bit more open. Um, he's able to find those little, cute little balls between the lines to Johnson when he wants to make those runs in behind. But um, I think Johnson just benefited as a result of that um, the ta that sort of tactical tweak and our, our ability to kind of play in transition rather than dominate the ball. And it was more transitional, wasn't it? It was yeah, more transitional. Suited and that suits so him well. down to the ground. We saw that last year. Like that, That is what suits him. Yeah. Suits, and again, it suits Werner as well. But Johnson's more of a killer, as we obviously we saw with the goal. And he took Fuck that Werner. really, really well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, he, he obviously took it very, very well. And again, he, he could, Johnson could have, he could have had a hat trick really for the same goal. Yeah, 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 you yeah. Know, like obviously, the, the, there was one that he sort of hit a bit of a powder puff shot at the keeper. Um, there was one in the first half before he scored where he kind of dragged a cross shot wide, which was unlucky. And then the one in the in the second half where Solanke, if he's a bit brave at that back post, he probably scores. You know, where his, so go on, sorry, his, sorry, I just cut you off. But his goal was really unex unex. He weren't aesthetically pleasing at all. It looked like a FIFA goal. It didn't look real. No, you mean because he was like, yeah. off balance as he hit it, but he drilled it. It was so yeah. weird. and it was like... right in the corner. Like, it yeah, was not saving that. Um, yeah, but yeah, no, I think Johnson benefited as a result of that in terms of it being a more direct transitional game. And I think again that suits him massively when he's got space to run into, and you've got players with the and the, kind of to come on to Solanke. Really, I thought Solanke was excellent. I thought he was really good. I thought Johnson had moments again that he can improve on in the game in terms of some of his decision making at points, etc. Maybe not doing things with slightly enough conviction on a consistent basis, but it's such an improvement from him. Like I thought he looked a lot more confident, Johnson. Like he did look it. And again, and come back to the eye test, these things that you can sort of notice. You'd like him to be a bit more ruthless and score a couple of goals and 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 these things be a little bit better. But again, this all comes with time with him. Like I'm not worried about that now, like with him especially if we're going to play like this and yeah. the, the, these games are going to be a bit more like this um, for Spurs, hopefully. Uh, but with Solanke, yeah. I thought Solanke was brilliant. I really did. Like, he was I, I really thought good. He's, he's so... I said this after the Leicester game. He's so smooth. Like, in every kind of action that he's got, he dribbles like a winger when he's got the ball in those central areas. He gets the ball out of his feet quickly and smoothly to the players that want to run beyond him. Like, again, you look at his average position. It was like watching Harry Kane for Spurs. Like, a, a, an exaggeration. Yeah, he was in involved, of, he was involved, involved a lot more than you think. He was involved he a lot more, be. but he was involved a lot deeper. You know, we, we've yeah. always, we've, you know, we, I think we've all got it in our heads uh, about, like, what is an ad, like we've about had this conversation? Yeah, so exactly. Like, yeah, what yeah, an yeah. Ad number nine is? It, is it someone that just sit, like stands between the width of the post and waits for the cutback? Yes, in a version, certain iteration of the way that we want to play or the way Ange has played in the past. Solanke was playing like Kane. 
you know, dropping a bit deeper. And when you've got players like Kulazewski, who's an excellent ball carrier in transition, Sonny, who wants to run into the space on transition, Johnson, who wants to run into the space on transition, Sonny more in the central areas, Johnson more in the wide areas. Solanke dropping deep, taking a centre-back with him, getting tight to him, getting round him and popping it off. He was brilliant at that. Absolutely brilliant at that. Look, the goal was a tap-in, but he's in the right area. Um, he could and should have had a few more, probably. There was the one in the first half where Madison got to the byline and cut it back, and somehow it doesn't go in. It's not, you know, it's not... He gets something on it, but they've got two or three players on the line, and it, you know, it's one of them. Yeah. The one in the second half where Benton Core makes that brilliant drive into the box, and it sort of falls to him, but Flecker makes a good save. Yeah. Again, yeah, can yeah. he be a bit more brave on that back post in the second half where Johnson smashes the ball across the face of goal probably and then he gets the second goal but you know there's been so much chat about Solanke about like you know like that tweet from the match of the day being like finally gets off his off the mark it's like fucking hell really it's like this is what yeah. we're doing and it's like you can tell that oh, I think what must be so nice for Solanke and it kind of again links to Johnson really you know Solanke hasn't had to go through what Johnson's gone through in the last week or so but you know Solanke uh, Postacoglu in the press conference on uh, Friday coming out and basically sort of coming out to bat for Solanke and just being like, look, you guys need to fucking calm down, mate. Do a bit of yoga, mate. You know, like <laughs> just... He's, he's, imagine he's, him doing yoga. <laughs> yeah, imagine, mate. Hot, hot yoga. Jesus Christ. Be sweating like fucking... <laughs> he like he like gets a fucking tweak in his back, like a muscle yeah, spasm. Oh, like, and? Yeah. Oh, I can't fucking move, mate. <laughs> mate. Oh, <laughs> Johnny, I'm I need to help me up, mate. <laughs> 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 um, but yeah, no, he, uh, you know, for, for Solanke, like, he came out and said it, didn't he? He was like, he and basically said, fuck off and come back when he's not scored 50. He's not scored in his first 15 games. I believe in him. He was always the one. And look, the goal wasn't anything yeah. spectacular, but his performances have deserved a goal of some form and he's got it. And I think that will give him a lot more confidence now because, again, in terms of this variation, the way that we play, he's not going to be, you know, he, he, this is kind of playing to his strengths a lot, isn't it? We know he's a brilliant presser. We know he can run in behind. He's quick as well, Solanke. Like, that was one of the things that I never really realised that much. And then I saw someone say, like, I think I, I sort of remembered when we signed him. It was like, apparently he had the second highest sprint in the Premier League. Second quickest sprint in the Premier League last season behind Van der Ven. Yeah. Um, he's lo I love him. I really, I really, I, I mean, I've, I've, I've been a big fan of the transfer ever since it was kind of first mooted, but... I really enjoyed his performance. He probably could have had a couple more, similar to Johnson. Again, I enjoyed his performance. Showed a lot more confidence and a lot more conviction. Um, and I think, again, the way the weird play is going to suit him. I think my question is now, and I don't know if you, what you think about this. Do you think this is the way... Do, I, do you think that playing with two number 10s, because it seems to get the best out of the players that we've got, gets the best out of Johnson, gets the best mm -hmm. out of Kulazewski in that position... Gets the best out of Solanke probably in terms of one having two real creative outlets to provide him with service, but also ones that are going to run beyond him and ones that he can link up with and have Sonny running behind, etc. You know how like the inverted fullbacks were the story of last season, you know, in terms of and just plan and and just tactics. Yeah. Well, he'd create two attacking midfielders almost with their position. with those with those inverted fullbacks. Yeah. Yeah. Do, do you think that do you think that this is the way now? Do you think that these two number 10s, for the most part, not necessarily every game, but again, he showed that he's prepared to do it in big games against Arsenal. He did it, didn't he? Yeah. Do, do you yeah. think that the two number 10s, do you think this is going to become the story of our season now? Tactically, well, I mean. I think it all comes down to context of how we want to play. And we're never going to deviate from from the way we, we want to be on the front foot with the yeah. ball, possession, uh, intensity. So it suits us. As a team, I started that. I started play down to a T, and if we can find the right balance between where our fullbacks are in the midfield and where these the, Madison and Kulusevski are, it's perfect. Also, the type of player we always try and get the hybrid type player who can play across the whole midfield um, suits it down to a T as well. Like yeah. Bergvall, as he grows, will be unbelievable in that in that Madison position. Yeah, he'd be superb in that Madison position. Like we yeah. we and. Uh, my, my head's gone blank, but th these types of midfielders is what and wants. He 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 was always talking about getting. Or, well, there was always rumours about us going again for box to box midfielders, and we were just, or or creative. And we were thinking, do we need that when we were signing? Mate, you were saying it all along when we were linked with Eze. Everyone was like, but he's going to take Madison's position. He's going to take Madison. No, you can see exactly what we were going to do and play Madison and Eze, maybe. Like, potentially yeah. play Madison and Eze. Yeah. So it's obviously a plan. It's obviously an evolution of 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 
Ange ball. And also, and, but it's working at the moment, and and teams are our teams are, are are suffocating us being suffocated in our press and being overwhelmed in our attack, and it, and it's starting to click. We saw the potential of it yeah. in Everton and Brentford, and. And it's the way to go, I think, even against a stronger opposition. What do you reckon? I, I, I think I think it will be the way to go because you've got six. Obviously, Benson Core, I think, is we, well, we don't know how long he's going to be spending out the team. Obviously, I don't think we expect him to play on Saturday. We thought it'd be done and dusted by then in terms of the ban because I think Spurs had yeah until the last Thursday or whatever to appeal it. But God knows what's going on there. But, you know, in an ideal world, that front six... And I know Sonny's legs are going a little bit because he's 32 or, or you know, coming up to that. You've got six excellent pressers there in Bentoncourt, Johnson, Kulazewski, Solanke, Madison and Son who are going to work tirelessly off the ball. And you can tell yeah. that, you can see that's why he went that way against Arsenal as well because the clear plan was that, that again, a bit like Brentford, they're going to sit in, they're still going to try and play out because it's what they do and try and get the ball over the top, which is what Brentford wanted to do. But Kulazewski, okay, I thought our press was so clever on Saturday as well because it was like, well, I think I feel like we'd almost bait them in because we'd sit back a little bit. Yeah. One would go, whether it was Johnson, if they try and play out down the left, and then once they try and play inside, that's the trigger. And then you've got four or five players then in Benson, Cor, Madison, Solanke, and uh, um, Sonny ready to pounce, ready to go. So yeah. clever, I think, in terms of how we trap them and turn the ball over consistently. Again, Newcastle, how many high turnovers? Arsenal, how many high turnovers? You don't need to necessarily... It's not just about, like... You know, I think... One word that I think gets... gets thrown around a little bit too easily in football nowadays is balance. And I think people have almost lost sight of what it actually means, especially in, like, a midfield three. I think a lot of people will go... And on paper... In, in some people's definition of what balance is, you'd say Basuma, Saar and Madison is a very balanced midfield. It is. You kind of got a bit of everything in there. You've got that bit of defensive solidity. Saar, in terms of his ability to go other way on transition, etc. But if you want to dominate these games and you want to press hard the pitch, that is the most balanced attack and balanced midfield that Spurs have got. For the way that we want to play, I think that's that that is yeah. that, that that on Saturday was what Tottenham want to be, I think. And I think in other games, we'd probably want to dominate the ball a bit more. I don't think Ange cares about having the ball that much. I, I think it's just because of the way that we play and the quality that we've got on the ball and the fact that teams are going to sit in deeper against us. Naturally, we have more possession. And obviously, Saturday was only the third time in his reign where we've had less possession than the other team. And let's be honest, it was 52-48, I'm pretty sure, on Saturday. It wasn't like it was, you know, they dominated the ball or anything. It was basically even. But on the stats, it was that they had more than us, marginally, obviously. I don't think Ange cares because I think you can still be relentless and 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 clinical and controlling. Attacking. Because again, we yeah. had this conversation last week about Arsenal. Who controlled the North London derby? Was it Tottenham because yeah, we had seventy percent of the ball, or was it Arsenal because they can they let they played the game at the way they wanted to? You know, yeah. I think you kind of have to take a bit of that into it as well. And I think that in terms of what Tottenham want to be as an attacking force. I think if you can line up with that lineup as many times as possible, you're going to win more points than you are going to with Saar in the team. And that's not that's no disrespect to Saar. And again, it's obviously you can change things up in game and just bearing on the strengths of the opposition, etc. Um, but you know, I, th I thought it was, I thought it was really good. I thought, I mean, it was probably a good segue to come on to Benton Court, but yeah, Benton Court. He was incredible, man. Like I, I, Madison yeah. was man of the match because of. He, he just was like, but yeah. Benton Core <laughs> was like that. He was for the 60 odd minutes that he was on the pitch, he was 10 out of 10, like generally 10 out of 10. Found yeah. like unbelievable performance from him. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the thing, thing with Benton Core, because there's been so many worries about the number six position going into the season. How has it, has it been addressed? We've signed Archie Gray. Who I actually don't think will actually be a number six. He's, I think he's more of an a, an eight slash um f in, like fullback in this. I think he, I, don't, I think he could be a six like that. I think again, it's like well, I don't think we've probably thought Benton. It's just not six. ready. Yeah, yeah, that's now. true. Yeah. yeah, not now. He's just not ready yet. But maybe yeah, possibly. But he. But anyways, we the like what I'm trying to say is that number six position. We didn't sign that established number six that we were all hoping we would. But obviously, yeah. I don't think the market was there. Anyway, that's like a side note. But Basuma started really well to the season, it, like really well. But Bentinkor, like, oh my God. is that a sign 
of what he can really be as a six because it's been questionable when playing. Is he a six or an eight? What's his best position? Is that a sign of what he could actually be? Because he was mopping everything up. His his passing was so crisp. His yeah. his, his dribbling seems like back to his Zidane days, <laughs> like under Conte. And I, I don't know. Like, it, do you think? Sorry, I'm asking so many questions, but like, is he finding his true form now in regards to recovering from his injury, or do you think he's sort of the last year's sort of been an adaption period to playing a little bit? more deeper in that sort of six because most for the majority of his time under Ange, he's played six yeah yeah he has he has you're right he has hasn't he he's, he's kind of always it's either been Basuma or Benson call we've rarely mm. seen them all to, like both together yeah. um yeah I, 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 he was just amazing um he's reading of everything like you said he's passing the thing is where teams are going to sit off you like Brentford did press us a little bit but, you know, Basuma is so great at breaking that first press, kind of getting us out of the first phase where he's dribbling yeah. on a pass and then you go, whereas we didn't really need that on Saturday because a lot of the times, like, Vicario would have the ball and he'd be able to play it straight into Madison and then you could sort of go, you know, split the strikers that way and play through them. Um, but Bentico, it was like, again, the way, like you said, he mopped everything up and then when he mops it, he drives, doesn't he? He doesn't give it and yeah. stop. I think so the, direct. the chance for two, two examples, the chance in the first half where we talk, spoke about earlier where Solanke had it cleared off the line, where we were able to create the overlap down the side with Kulusevski and then Madison going beyond him into the box. That all comes with that crunching Benton core tackle. He gets up straight away. He rolls his foot over the ball. Like the aesthetics. I, he, oh yeah. Oh my God. That he was might sick. Be the most that was so good. Like, in terms of aesthetics, you know, like I look at Benton so core, silky. That's how I want to play at five side. Like with him, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I want to wear the black boots. I want to roll my foot over the ball and I want to give it and I want to go and I want to go and slide in and win the ball back. It's like that, isn't it? Low um, socks. He has low socks, doesn't he? Low socks. Little tit He's just low little tippy toes. And it's just, he's just so robust for someone that is so elegant. Sexy. Yeah, he just fit. He, like, yeah. Like, he just you know, oozes sex. He's another one of them yeah. players, I think. I bet yeah. he smells amazing as well. I bet his missus is so satisfied in life. Yeah, hundred percent. Because he's got a he nice was, it, wear just, cut as well, like with the sort of the mullet yeah. thing going on. Just he's fit. tall. He could he could tall. He definitely smells amazing. Yeah. He he he's uh, he like he was crying in an interview talking about his missus. Yeah. Uh, okay, there's the racist factor. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. <laughs> but, but um, but but uh, there's no but to that. No but no, to that. No, but the, yeah. but. <laughs> <laughs> but he just definitely is just unbelievable in bed, is what I'm trying to say. Yeah. But he, yeah. but that ban is worrying me because he's getting into his pump. I know. He deservedly, he not worrying me because he deserves to get banned. He deserves. Yeah, to be like absolutely. Educated yeah. and and but the ban in when it comes to his form is coming alive again, and that ban is probably going to come at a wrong, uh, a bad time. Yeah. Which is his fault, but um. The only positive though is that at least he can still play in the Europa League, and uh, this. You know, oh, where we're gonna, yeah, yeah, it's, know it'll be, it's a FA ban. It's not a, it's not because it w it wouldn't have fallen under UEFA's jurisdiction because it wasn't anything to do with them. <laughs> it's the last competition he's fucking allowed to play in because of his antics. <laughs> yeah, pretty much if for all different reasons as well. Yeah, pretty much. So it'll be it'll be yeah. Premier League and League Cup, and obviously with the FA oh, Cup, but it won't okay. go on for that long unless it is twelve games, which I, I can't, I can't imagine it would be. I think that'd be the harsh end of the spectrum. And then if it's six games, it's you know six games. But no, I, I um. Yeah, he uh, at least with the Europa League that he can he's still going to be in a rhythm, isn't he? Because it's like you're playing once every two weeks, or like for example, like Carabao. Yeah, I, I think he'll start yeah. on Thursday because well, he like, come off after sixty minutes. Probably yeah, I think, I think he'll start bearing that in mind. Yeah, yeah. I think he'll yeah. Start he was really really good. It's like well, he it's was like, really good. I think Ange is it's probably in a position where it's like you, know, you probably deserve it, but it's also like I want to give you the you know you're important to us. He is really important to us. It's like you know, he, but. I think I do still think we're probably going to see some inconsistencies with him because we we have seen that since he's come back from injury, but that was yeah. his best performance since coming back. One hundred percent. That was like watching him in under Conte. Like that was that ten out of ten. He was incredible. And like I said, with that yeah. with that chance, yeah. the way that he makes a tackle, plays a one two, rolls his studs across the ball and plays forward and drives the second one in the second half where it was. Look, I love Basuma and I think that Basuma is a really important player to us, but. You know when Basuma came on and within like two or three minutes he got booked for going through the back of someone. 
And again, mm. that kind of comes down to a bit of that rustiness of being injured for a couple of weeks and not being in the team and not playing football and stuff. But he, um, he, uh, Bentancourt, there was that one in the second half where he's amazing at getting tight to a player and not having to foul him and just poking the ball away. And then there was that, yeah. there was, he did that in the second half and then did a pirouette around the player and then just drove into the box. He's fascinating to watch dribble because it's like, it's just so like, I can't describe it. He has really small strides as well. Yeah, His exactly. legs are like that. It's like it's a ridiculous. Car, it's like a car that's stalling. You know, it's just like but, but rapid, good, but rapid. stalling at ninety miles per hour. Yeah, yeah. and in a good in a good way because it's literally just like he's going like this. Like he's just he's like a, yeah, like yeah, a yeah. cat that's being. That's what his wife something. sees as well. <laughs> yeah, very did. true. <laughs> yeah, POV. <laughs> he's he's a fascinating because it's all like it's touch it's touch tight. It's all so you know. It's like the ball is literally on a piece of Velcro on his boot. Like, it's like that. Yeah, silky. He's a fascinating so silky. player. Um, I mean, the whole midfield, Kulosevsky, we're not going to talk about it because we aren't, like, it would get Peggy18 in, in, in the chat because he he is just so unbelievable as a, yeah. as a football player. In, in I actually didn't think he had his best game on Saturday, but I think that... that it's, like... the, it's the directness, though, of, of him... Benton call Madison oh, and mate. the aggressiveness. I know he lost the ball in a couple of like bad situations leading to the first goal as well. But yeah, like, it's again, not even that. there was a couple seeing... of, in terms of his attacking decision making. Like there was one we oh, should okay, square yeah, it's yeah. blanky oh, in, yeah, like, in the yeah, first yeah, half yeah. and stuff. But I yeah. think again, do you know what? It's almost a little bit like Sonny, where I came away from that game thinking, I don't think Sonny had a great game today. But then when you I think it's because you're judging him on what you you're judging him on what you know he's best at. And then when actually, when you zoom out and like, don't get me yeah. wrong, I don't think Kulisevsky was bad at all. Like, he wasn't bad. He was good, like, really good. Again, but there was, there was a couple of things I was just like, oh, that just would have, you know, ah, oh, he's not quite done the right thing there. But in terms yeah. of the overall benefit to the system, he's, he was, he was great again. Um, but a bit like Sonny in the sense it, that I think it, we're kind of judging him on, like I said, I, I, I am, um, I, like I said, I think I came away thinking that he was poor because, when he got set through on goal a couple of times, just really didn't show that sort of same conviction as we're used to just seeing him running away, running through and just, I wish you, how many times I used to say it, it was like, shut your eyes and you're back at the halfway line because he's put it in the back of the net. But actually in terms of yeah. what Sonny did off the ball, in terms of the chances that he created and stuff, he was actually great. And that role suits him down a lot better. So I think sometimes when you're judging a player's performance, you're almost judging it through the eyes of like, how could you expect them to be at the things that they are best at? And I think with Kulazewski, a lot of the time, that's his decision-making. And I think with Sonny, it's his ruthlessness in front of the goal. But outside of that, they were both great. Well, do you not think, like, it's a testament to Kulazewski's form that now we're judging him per matches on his mistakes? Great point, instead yeah. Because cause Son, again, everyone and their nan, except mine, she, she passed away the other day. But um, okay. everyone and their nan saying, R.I.P., um, is saying that... Uh, like son, like everyone says, Son's world class. But who's mo the most sort of critical of Son? Spurs fans, mm. because we see his mistakes and we think, oh, like he's so we expect so much of him, and it's almost becoming this season like that with Kulusevski. But it, even still, he was still that you know when we say all the time where it'll it'll do something when he's driven past the player, and it'll be like, what the fuck? He's just put it in the opposite direction, yeah, and then. And he, he's not the quickest, but he's absolutely bodied the, the defender to the ball. And yeah. now he's running with the outside of his boot, running towards their goal at an inverted angle. Do you know what and I mean you, by that? And like, you know that? He'll yeah. push it wide and then sh like wriggle him off the ball. Or, or like They look like they're going to get it. All of a sudden, he's on the ball again. Yeah. It's so unesthetically... It's so unique and unorthodox but it's like Benton like, it's kind of like, yeah. Benton, like quite yeah, yeah. perhaps he's talent ID but you know with Kulazewski that once he does get through that that um that phase of play like you said where he's gone past someone or you know we've turned the team over and he's and he's he's not running with it because he's not especially quick as you said but you know that that weight of pass that is going to come once he's got players who are running ahead of him is going to be spot on you know that he's just going to yeah put that ball in like say if it's Johnson and this is why I said earlier like, I think that Johnson Kulu dynamic is great I think it's really good and it's going to cause yeah. I think it's going to get us a lot of goals it's because he's going to put the ball in front of Johnson where did Johnson wants the ball in front of him he doesn't want it to feet he wants it in front of him because he can run onto it and hit a shot first time or he can run onto it square a man up and then go and then cross he like Kulusevsky's and again if say if it's he's coming from the right and he wants to play Sonny in like that sort of more curved ball for Sonny to run onto 
His way of pass is fantastic. He's just the, the, the sheer quality and everything that he does. And like I said, I thought I was left frustrated on a couple of occasions, and it's really nitpicking with him. But again, I think the fact that I'm, I don't think there's probably, I don't think there's, you'll find too many bigger Kulazewski fans than me and you in this space. And the fact that I'm yeah, criticizing yeah. him for that, I think really shows that I'm nitpicking because I, I know how good he is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because no, I had exactly. a couple of people You've I my... on the, the, the sort of weaknesses of his yeah. game out so of did, nowhere. When did we did do that my... before? Exactly, exactly that. Because I, I did I did my play ratings on TikTok after the game on Saturday when I got home, and I was like, yeah, no, I thought Kalu was good. Uh, like, And I said, I think I gave him a 6.5, which in hindsight is probably a bit harsh. But the things that I said, again, it's because you're being nitpicky because you know how good he is. And I was trying to sort of explain that to people in the comments who were saying, Kulazewski, 6.5. And I was like, and again, maybe it's when you're at the game versus watching on TV, it's different. Those yeah, no, yeah. That, that's the, partly yeah. down to perception. But mate, I, I, yeah, I think that shows how far, I was going to say how far we've come with him, but I really don't think it is because I felt like this about him the whole time. <laughs> yeah. It's funny because we've been crying out for a 1v1 dribbler to sort of unlock low blocks, but you sort of, the way Kulazewski and Johnson combine and complement each other. You're combining and, and creating a 1v1 dribbler because that goes either way. And then yeah. with Poro sort of supporting who comes sent like central, you've then got a problem for who picks up who. And then yeah. it creates the same sort of issue for the for the opposition defence. So I do yeah. like that. I want to see more of that as they sort of grow together. But yeah. I'm gonna well, ask, ask you a question. Sorry, I because I said this. I did them um, Oso Spurs podcast last night and we were talking about this. And I I, I asked them the same thing when we were talking about Johnson. If this is going to be the way for Spurs now that we go with Kulu and Johnson, and again we're gonna we're gonna have tougher games than that against tougher low blocks that are tougher to break down than Brentford. But is there an argument to say, as well as the fact that we need another one v one winger, is there an argument to suggest that Spurs probably need to invest in another winger of the mould of Brennan Johnson, someone who is good at attacking space as well as like someone who is because obviously we brought in Odebear, and I think we look if if. If Spurs were offered, and this is a shit example because everybody would take him, right? If Spurs were offered Nico Williams tomorrow, you're going to take him, aren't you? Because it's what we yeah. need and he's got the quality. But say, I don't know, say, I'm trying to think of someone else that isn't isn't as much as a right 100% yes. But you know what I mean? Like, you're still going to take that profile of player in the squad because of the quality that they've got and what they'll yeah. bring, right? Is there yeah. an argument to say that we probably need to maybe look at another winger in the mould of Johnson now? In Buemo. In Buemo. Someone that's great at attacking Buemo. space. Yeah, who's not like necessarily well, actually, although he would be if he's going to play how Johnson plays on the left. Yeah, I don't know. I don't I, know there's I, not many players like Johnson, is there? In the modern no, game. he is a bit, he is a bit of a Quite unique a throwback. I think he's, he's a built, throwback. He's, he's kind of a, I think he's more built like a almost like a striker, isn't he? Johnson, really? Like, I don't think he's a, I think that's behind. Sort of. Yeah, he played up front at Forest for the most part, I think, in the championship and stuff, or did play out wide as well, but. He was an inverted um, forward, wasn't he? Yeah, he wasn't. He, he kind of, especially with wing, because he. I'm pretty sure the Forest player threw at the back, and they would have had a wing back that got, went beyond him. Yeah, Nico Williams or something, wasn't it? Yeah, so he would be making those more the Welsh runs. Always he played like a front two. Yeah, not not the. Yeah, that's the Nico <laughs> Williams I'm talking about. Just to get that relationship back with Johnson. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, we need Nico Williams. Yeah, exactly. That, that's how Spurs get that. Write that down. That's, that's how we unlock. There's another one for the YouTube thumbnail. Is that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, but no, yeah. I th it, it, is there an argument to say that now we need another? We need a dribbly well, boy, but do we need another well, Johnson? I think everyone's crying out for a dribbly boy, but now we've signed two potential dribbly boys plus Mikey Moore, who's mm. coming from the academy. We've signed Odebear and Yang. Yeah. Yeah. In five years, they're going to be unbelievable. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully. But like, you can't then be like, okay, let's go sign a Nico. I'm not, obviously, we're never going to fuck it. No way. But we're going to yeah. like, we can't go and sign like a, a, a world beat a dribbly winger because then Mikey Moore. I mean, we can and we should, but in in uh, we're not gonna. I don't think because then you've you're looking at Mikey Moore, Yang, Odebear, Son. They're all going what well, fuck, and then on the right, Johnson Kulusevski is now coming. We're now looking at a different profile, I think, and that's why I'm saying in Buemo because I, I, another player I'm I'm looking at thinking dribbly boy is um Bayon Gittens. Yeah, but. Great show. But he's, he's on the, he's the predominantly camera, on the he? left. He he's come alive, isn't he? But he's he's predominantly on the left, and that's the thing. You're thinking, how many left wingers can we have in the squad? Odebear's better on the left. Yang 
can play either side. Of, I'm not going to pretend like I know that much about fucking Yang, but he can play um, on both. Yang from from yeah. my YouTube video that I did, which you can go watch. Yeah, on the, yeah a bit of a you can go watch it. You can go check it he, out. Yeah, uh, he can play on both sides. Yeah, but then, but uh, and then you've obviously got Mikey Moore, who's who's put on the right in preseason and performed well. But again, he's not a right winger. He's a he's he's a, wing, a left or or central type player, and I think there's not many right out and out right wing and dribbly talents out there but I know what you mean someone to sort of rival Brennan Johnson because the the frustration with Brock Johnson has been his clinicalness and his finishing he does get a lot of chances Johnson and when that clicks yeah. hopefully it clicks and then he can he can come from there but we're creating a lot and it, on another day all the, the shot the chances he misses go in and we and how many extra goals is that season so yeah, someone I, that can come in and and like do you know what I mean rival him I think that is I don't think there's an issue with him playing because and that type of player on the wing because we do still create a lot yeah do you know who I think we should sign as a, do you know I think we should sign as a backup for Johnson Someone that was linked with us a while ago. Adama Traore. Deo Lefeo. Adama Traore. <laughs> no. Are you taking the piss? <laughs> that would be so fun. Imagine in a system where it's like, yeah, we're going we're gonna to play on the counter-attack again. We're going to let them have the That's... ball. And we're going to play on the counter-attack. Adama Traore in space on that right wing. <laughs> Mate, there was a time where he was so clinical. He cannot... Hit the, like, <laughs> you, are you wall. joking? I am sort of joking, yeah. <laughs> okay, you're probably still in the shadows. Like, I just feel like Andrew's like, Andrew's like, I need a Andrew dribbling really fun. <laughs> 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 that would be like an and type sign. I mean, what's the difference between signing a Dom Traore and signing Werner? I'd rather have Traore. Yeah, he's, he's a differential, isn't he? Like, at least he's like, I know. You know. well, mate, you know, purple and gold are going to take this out of context and fucking clip you up for that. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> just like they said, I'd said that we win the league, apparently. After Everton, um, I, I finally bit the other day. I, I, did you see that? I know, I did see it. I did see it. Yeah, I was like, "Fucking go on in, Ben." Fucking, yeah. yeah. Maybe you'll get lucky and they'll block you. Then you never have to fucking see yeah. it again. Seb got blocked. Um, I know, and the, you can imagine the fucking block. euphoria on his timeline. Yeah. yeah. Um, I what was it? Oh yeah. Do you think what we saw in that game? Do you think that's an insight of the end game for Ange? But obviously, we're singing Ange's name. We're all behind him. Apart yeah. from there's a minority that's screaming he's not good enough. But fucking hell. I mean, the majority of our... Do you want to be like Arsenal, really? I know you can You can have... Obviously, you can be critical of him. We are. I just think it's two years in. Do you want to be like an Arsenal fan base? A reactionary? Because look at Arsenal now. They've completely flip-flopped and they're now Sukula Mink and Arteta off. <laughs> And acting like it's, it was always rosy, where they were printing Arteta out t-shirts. Yeah, exactly. We we, we want to be rational here. At Darren and doing, I think we're a pretty rational pod. Yeah. Yeah, Darren and doing. I, I think. Yeah, the, we're seeing that everything, every process, every rebuild. The hardest element of that is finding consistency because mm. you're learning new trades. You're learning, and you're and you're trying to drill that into the ground. What you're trying to do, um, your game plan, your yeah, but. What that kind of set an example of what it should be, Angeball, when it's when it's ticking, and I do think that's an insight of like the end game of Angeball, how we can blow teams away. And I think the way we play reminds me a little bit of you know Liverpool back in 2019 when they were winning, they were rivaling City and they were winning Champions Leagues and and um uh, and a premier a, a premier one a premier league a champions league getting to finals in every competition uh, playing that way they were blowing teams away and then they would press like rabid dogs when they didn't have the ball suffocate a team into making mistakes and they would not let them rest and the defense in the end didn't have to do much the, the, if you looked at the way they were set up they were like us they were really open to transition but they would uh, what's that Mourinho comment when he was talking about his um, Porter team? It was like we would bite like dogs, yeah, and get it. I don't know why he's Italian, but um, that's what Liverpool would do, and that's what we were doing with Benton Core, Madison. Like when we'd lose the ball with Doggy, Porro, Romero, Van Aven. The amount of times fucking Van Aven came out of thin air and absolutely crunch and challenge uh, someone trying to transition on the on the attack for Brentford. It, it really reminds me of Liverpool, but. The way, and I brought this up earlier, the way we were playing around the box, 
the sort of movement and the and the constant dragging players out of position was a bit city esque as well. Yeah, it was. It was really like against a low block in, yeah. when they're uh, obviously not against Arsenal the other day, but it, I, I was trying to think of what team we most like because obviously Guardiola is a massive influence on Postecoglou as well. He's open with that, but Postecoglou has got a lot of affiliation with Liverpool, and I, I do think that I do see a resemblance there with the 2019 type yeah. Liverpool team. I was just looking when you were saying that. I went on to FB Ref and I was looking at their average possession for each team in the Premier League that year when they won it. And they averaged 63% possession. It's like that's kind of what we're seeing at the moment with Spurs. But they also have that ability to, to when they don't have the ball, because they're going to control it for so long, they have the ability to have that energy consistently throughout games for longer to turn the ball over because they're controlling yeah. the ball for a long game. And it's yeah. the same with City, yeah. right? In the esque of like, you're able to kind of create these different sort of different kind of overloads. That again, that I'll come back to it, that chance that we had with Solanke where we win the ball back high up the pitch, and then you're able to get Kulzewski in the wide left position. Madison makes the run in beyond him, gets to the byline and cuts it back. Like a lot of it was and again, how many times have we said that we've got the players to play that way that City do? And but also, yeah. like you said, I think Postagoglu probably, you know, he's very much got his style, but you know, being a Liverpool fan as well that he is and obviously watching a lot of the Premier League and the way that Klopp managed and again, that kind of high intensity rock and roll football. Naturally, some of that influence has probably rubbed off on him. So I kind of, I do get what you're saying with the, like the 1920 Liverpool thing. Like I said, they had a lot of possession that year, but they also had the, the, the out of possession. They would, they would, they'd run like dogs to go and get it back. Like, again, that's why someone like Henderson was so important in that midfield. And then look at the quality that they did have to, because it's like you, I think everybody thinks that, you know, everybody thinks that Liverpool were a counter-attacking side on the clock in those days, but having sixty-two percent possession wouldn't tell you the same story. You know that doesn't. No, doesn't they would suffocate them. defenses. They would be all yeah. around the the box. But they had the players the that when they wanted to play on the counter-attack, they would just dis- they d- could destroy players. And again, I think yeah. that's what you saw from Spurs a bit on Saturday. The, yeah, yeah, hundred percent. Yeah. A lot of the fundamentals of the attack that we've or, or the, the squad that we've built in terms in more of an attacking sense are suited for counter-attacking football. Brendan Johnson being the main one, right? He is yeah. suited to counter-attacking football. Yeah. Sonny is suited to counter-attacking football. Yeah. Solanke. And that's why you saw us t- Solanke again, another one, a strike, a bit like Firmino, will drop in deep, will bring other players into play, you know. Um, and again, I think that's why Solanke's season will be so about so much more than his goals. I'm going to read you a, uh, when my internet just went down there, for anybody who's not, uh, for anyone who, my internet just died and uh, we had to quickly restart. <laughs> While I was waiting for it to come back on, I was, I was I wanted I was intrigued to see what the last line in the Ange Ball book is, right? Because no we wonder you took so long, Ben. You fucking read the whole Ange Ball book. <laughs> I was, <laughs> well, I tried to get I to the, it was a bit at the end, like the acknowledgements. I was like, I don't know, this doesn't sound right. It's about his wife wearing a Tottenham Hotspur cap. I was like, um, but the because um, <laughs> you said, is this the end game of Ange Ball, right? And again, we're going to talk talk quickly about the uh, the fans forum last night where he said something similar. The last line of the of this book says, um, there's a bit of a prelude to it, but it says, and you can bet the Postacoglu will stay true to those values in all circumstances, no matter what life throws at him, it's who he is. He ain't going to change in terms no, of mate. philosophy. But what we saw on Saturday was a man... I said this the other day. Did I, not? I said this. Ange Postacoglu, above anything, has got his styles, he's got his principles, absolutely. But he wants to win games of football. That's why you saw a change on Saturday because it's like, this is how we beat Brentford. So all this nonsense about Ange not having a plan B, he will die by the sword or what's the phrase? What's the phrase, you know? Live by the sword, die by the sword in terms of his principles. Again, last night, what was the quote from him where he got asked about whether we should be more pragmatic? Yeah, I get that, mate, but it's not... It's not us, not who we are. It's not us, it's not us, mate. Um, yeah, so why don't like, you fuck off with your why, shit question yeah, if, you I'm joking, be, if you're watching whoever asked that question if you're watching, you're watching you know what he question. should do do you know what Andrew thinks sometimes you do I think Sherwood was ahead of the curve when he <laughs> when he took the gilet off and gave it to a fan and said well you go and fucking do it <laughs> I think that's yeah. what Andrew, do you know what I think Andrew's got that in him like you saw the way that he yeah. bit back at the fan at the City game last year which was a horrible experience for everyone we don't really want to go back there because I feel like we've come a long way since then and I've I cool. love I think I love Ange more than I did now at the start because I've been quite defensive of him and Saturday like when he let that little mm. smile go when Johnson scored and after the game you could tell and again something that he said last night I'll try and find the quote but he he said that what did he say he was like he sort of said along the lines of like I'm not a manager that's been 
what's it? I'm not a manager that's driven by proving people wrong, I think is what he said. Something like that. Like, um, but I think it does take a bit of pleasure in it. It's not, it's not what motivates him, but he did an interview with Optus, I think it was, after the game, like a, in the tunnel, like post-match interviewed, like usual. Yeah. And he sort of said, he was like, it's my, like, you know, I think the guy asked him about like some of the criticism that you've been getting and stuff. And he was like, he sort of said, it's, it's funny. I can't, I, I'm, you, I'll, I'll try and find it while you, um, I don't know, what do you, like, in terms of, what, what, I, I'll ask you the question. What do you think about his the, the answering of that question in terms of like being pragmatic and him sort of dispersing it? Well, I'll try and find what he actually said. What? Sorry. What? What? what, what sorry. What uh, question in, was he asked? As in, he basically got asked. Well, in the in the one last night where he got asked about being more pragmatic. To, oh, I lost. I lost. Oh, things. and he was like, "That's the oh, yeah. okay, yeah, yeah, yeah." I'm just trying to find well, yeah, this. no, but I mean, he he does break the mold, and there's 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 always football is. There's such a spectrum of ideologies in football, isn't there? But yeah. in black and white, there's defense and attack. There's, and and you'll find where you see football. He always talks about where you see football. He always used to say, or he has said before, um, if you were given one football game to save your career, how would you set up? And I think people call it naive, people call it brave, uh, but... The, that is the way he wants to play. That's the way he sees football. And he has one doing that. So why can't he then come into the Prem with better players and win at some stage? Yeah. I think there's always question marks. I mean, Liverpool were a fucking laughing stock before they got Van Dyke. And I know we I know we've um I, I know we've got really good defenders and we still uh, there's still question marks over our defense and stuff, but Liverpool were a laughing stock. All of a sudden they got Allison and Van Dyke and, and it fixed. And they, 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 no one was talking about the defense. Everyone's sort of saying they had a really good defense and they, they, yeah. they were unbeatable. There's, but for for a year or so under Klopp, they were saying as well, you're very attacking, but your defense is shit. Like basically, that, that, that's that narrative, and people were running with the narrative because again, he's come in, he's he's Australian. There's uh, that he's not bald and he's not Spanish, and do you know what I mean? He he he, 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 he looks like someone who runs a barbecue. Yeah, like. Uh, actually, that, that that's not prejudice, is it? No, like <laughs> no. I know. I know. Mean. Ozzy's like the barbecue, but no. But he just looks like your uncle. Uh, yeah, uh, like Uncle Ange. Yeah, Uncle Ange. Yeah, yeah. Uncle Ange. He, yeah. he, uncle Ange. Like... he did, and and you're thinking when and you expect when you ask Uncle Ange about football, he knows fuck all and he's gammon. Yeah. Yeah. But he he will tell you and, and he, his but knowledge of the game is ridiculous. A book written about him will probably tell you otherwise. Fucking it? multiple books. Yeah. yeah. He's fucking. Do you know, and do you know, and do you know what? He's broken a mold. And do you know and what? It as can work. Yeah, absolutely. And do you know what? As much as I love the like one, the concept and the style of Ange Ball or whatever that is in terms of the way that we play, I love the way that we play it. And I love the fact that Ange has kind of got this associated with him. The fact that he's clearly seen as that he's put on a pedestal that much to have this book written about him and have Ange Ball as like a, a thing. I actually think that does him a bit of a detriment sometimes because kind of what you were just saying, like no other manager has this much scrutiny in terms of the way that they want to play. And I think, it, again, it comes with this kind of patronising undertone of like, what do you mean you're going to bring your fucking oh, start? This is the Premier League. Like, you know, you can't yeah. just fucking walk up with two yeah, great yeah. back and do it like that. <laughs> like, you know, it's like dumbed down all the time. Like, and again, I think that's why he's a bit sarky. He's a bit like, I ain't got fucking time for this because the yeah, press yeah, is just yeah. there. And this was the interview that, so I found it. He was like, basically, you can see him there smiling like that. He basically got asked about he the the interview for Optus was like plenty to be positive about today, and Andrew was like, "Yeah, funny that, isn't it? Funny that plenty to be positive about." And it's like he he I don't think he's driven by that like um I don't think he's driven by the criticism and driven by like that scrutiny, but I does think I do think he takes a bit of pressure improving uh, sorry does take a bit of pleasure improving people pleasure. wrong. He yeah. Does, yeah, he has yeah. a big old well, raincoat, mate. Well- <laughs> To be fair, well, I wanted what, to go after I, mean, I enjoyed that. Yeah, and think of the biggest. Think of think of the wank after we win something with him, and you've and you know you, <laughs> and you know you've and you've stuck by him through yeah. this. And I feel like I don't the, wank myself to sleep I feel in like that hotel most room. Most pioneers, and Bill Powell. Like, <laughs> Bill Powell, yeah, your mate, you're sharing a bed with your mate because you, yeah, you've sorry, got one bedroom. Yeah, sorry, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> He's like, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> we both be doing it. <laughs> 
Yeah. And crying. No, no, Tom because Garrett. you're so emotional. Yeah. <laughs> oh, um, but the uh, but uh, the thing is, most pioneers, most creators, most entrepreneurs, most uh, like people that aren't afraid to try something new and 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 go buy that. And like I looked at as fucking loons whilst they're yeah. doing it. It's only hindsight where you think, oh my god, they changed the the way people saw things in a different. Like, do you know what I mean? They and how influential they were in the end, or how time, incredible. It? It's only hindsight, that, isn't it? It's like, it's exactly. People, yeah, people don't like people being different, and there's always a patronizing tone, and there's always. But in ten years, people could be saying, "Fuck me!" Do you remember the Ange days where he come in, he completely revolutionised the team. Everyone doubting us, and we fucking won the league cup. No, you know what I mean. It's like, who knows what people will say at the end of his tenure? It will either be a disaster or or a, a success. And why you got back it because it is something different. He, he's someone to be proud of because he's not 100%. a sheep. Do you people know, are, do people you know what I mean? Break like, the so mold. That's those are the people that you want to follow. Yeah. Those are the people that you want to, you know, people who, yeah, you know, not like um, he's got his own ways. And, and like I said, I do think the whole. I do think the um, because there is so much scrutiny about the way that he plays from some of our fans, but the media, like this whole Ange ball thing, I do think that holds him back a bit. Not holds him back, that's the wrong word, but like I do think he's... People calling it Ange balls a bit patronising as well. A little bit, yeah. A little bit, I think. There's a little bit of a like tongue-in-cheek. Oh, you like, oh, yeah, your little Ange ball, yeah. you like your Ange ball. Yeah, 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 like, yeah, 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 yeah. Fuck off. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Coglu ball. Yeah, exactly. Ange Postacoglu football tactics. <laughs> that's what it is and we're going to win mate also also i think he he i i think he disappointed quite a few people on the um when he was on rtv i think people were thinking he was going to be like really detailed t- tactic yeah like but he was just like mate. he was just positive smiley happy to be there because he's he's done he's done the yeah <laughs> he's done the tv gig before so like he i think he was a little bit performative he was different to what you normally saw he was he, people were like it was a good people were like oh is this yeah yeah it's cuz he was had a bit of a fucking break off, yeah. off spurs and he thought we were getting Eze and neto but yeah. um <laughs> but the, the the I don't know. He just I think a lot of people just have this perception of him, and it will change when he wins something, and they'll think fucking hell. Like he, even if he wins the League Cup, the Europa League, he's wait. the most successful Spurs manager in our recent history. Since yeah, we were talking about this last night. If he wins two thousand eight, yeah, two thousand nine. If he was to win two trophies, he'd be as success. He'd be a legend at Tottenham if he won like one more. Yeah. Than one. Even if you won one, Oscar would be a legend if you won a trophy at Spurs. 100%. 100%. Like, uh, one yeah. there, Ramos is not a legend. No like, it. He's not. But because we were shit. <laughs> like, whereas with Oscar Cogler, I don't know. Like, it's just. I just. Yeah, I just I, think, I, I'm, I'm going to talk about it in a video later. I, I want to do a TikTok video and talk about Spurs and why we're better and stuff like that than last year. But, like, I saw someone tweet this yeah. just now. Like, it's kind of going back to where we were before, but in terms of what the conversation. But. There's so many stats that are coming out at the moment, like first for possession, best pressing team, all this kind of stuff. Like that little graph that shows we're better than last year, where you put them on there yeah. and it's the different metrics. Just fucking watch us. Yeah. We are better. Yeah. We're better. Oh, we're going in the right direction. And just yeah, change. Yeah. And and just adapted. He's trying different things. I said this the other day, and I, I just am repeating myself on what I said about 10 minutes ago. But at the end of the day, as much as he wants, as much as he won't die on his, uh, sorry, as much as, he, as he'll fall on the sword of his principles and he, he won't change that. He's a winner and he wants to win football matches. And if he's not winning football matches, then something has to give. Like something so in terms of yeah. his approach. And so he will change. And he did that on Saturday. Yeah. So fucking, yeah. you know, I'll, I'll bang the drum of this man until he's not here anymore. But I do, I, I think yeah. if you can't see that he's the right man and the way to go, then you're a melt. And what's the solution? Yeah, you're a melt. Yeah. I, I mean, the, I mean, that was a very nice cathartic rant from both of us a bit yeah. of a tangent but i enjoyed that and i'm feeling pumped up like i've i've i'm Time ready to for fucking leave. smash carabag yeah 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 so before ben gives us a detailed tactical breakdown on carabag strengths weaknesses and club history um <laughs> i can actually give you a bit of that actually, I, because i've got the running can you actually yeah so jim shout out to jim by the way and i want to uh, um uh, so I did Oso Spurs last night, another brilliant Spurs podcast. And Jim, who is his pod, he's an amazing guy and he's got such an amazing story in terms of some of the stuff that 
he's doing. I, I wanted to find that quickly and give it a little shout out before we um before yeah, I yeah. talk about what I want to talk about. But um here it is. Right, so uh, he sent me so he was like when we get in the pod, he sent me the running order and quite conveniently had some stats about Caravac. So I'm sorry, Jim, if you're listening, I'm just gonna nick him. Um Jim's assisting, assisting he, uh, the pod. so they lost in the Champions League playoffs to Dynamo Zagreb over two legs, five nil. And we lost to Dynamo Zagreb. We can relate. We can relate. Uh, given Zagreb conceded nine goals to Bayern, we should go in with some hope that we can score two or three goals at home to Carabag. Although no shots in 45 minutes versus Coventry shows how it depends on what teams we play out. Uh, they We've played each other twice before and Spurs won both. I'm pretty sure it was when Sonny scored his first goal for us. Um, and top of the Azerbaijan league. Really? They are top of the Azerbaijan league though. Averaging two and a half goals Fuck. a game. And they've won three games in a row. Um but uh we're, yeah. we're holding three at least right. yeah um but we uh <laughs> I'll, actually i'll talk about i'll talk about it at the end with what i was going to say about oso spurs and jim but i'll come back to that but okay, yeah, yeah carabag nice but carabag um uh yeah fucking we'll beat him well we'll get on to them in a sec because i don't think there's much we can talk about carabag really apart from like apart from that what, yeah but about um, what we do isn't it how do we change and yeah, well, I was just going to say, like, how much change you want to see because, like, regarding Coventry with Angie's quotes about squad rotation, the, like, how many changes he actually made, do you reckon we'll have a lot of change, or do you reckon he'll maybe keep maybe the spine a bit similar and then just just get a few players in? Like, I don't know, I don't know. What do you reckon? Are you expecting to see the kids here? No, I think we less changes than Coventry, but I still think we quite a fair few. I don't think Mikey Moore will start. I think Bergval and Gray will probably start. I think Gray will start a right. Yeah, back. I think that's the way to go. I think Bergval will take Madison's place. I think Benson Cole will still probably play. Uh, I think Saar yeah. will probably come back in. Um, so Benson will Cole, play. Well, be the same midfield as Coventry then, basically. I think a doggy yeah. will probably play because we haven't got another option because Regalon's not in the squad. Um, Spence. <laughs> Spence ain't. Fuck it. That just, I know I just went on a glowing review that, about this man. Everything we just said about Anne's stupid <laughs> fell in doing that. Um, anyway, <laughs> you're doing so many favors, <laughs> yeah. I'm a hashtag out. Um, I think it'll be, I think Johnson might play again just to kind of give him that, like, okay, you're in a bit of a rhythm. Get another now, goal, so get another goal. Home. I think Solanke will probably play again because so, think about this. I'm basically naming the team that started against Coventry, <laughs> so <laughs> I'm getting there, aren't I? It's basically going to be the Coventry team, I think. I wouldn't be spot, except don't I'm play really fucking force, I so don't play force, and please don't play Werner. Even I think he will. I almost threw up my mouth for hearing both their names. <laughs> <laughs> <I'd>, uh, <laughs> imagine both of them, me and Ben just start gagging. Yeah. I mean, uh, Werner, who else would be there instead of Werner? That's the thing. It's Mikey, either Son or Cry- Mikey Moore, isn't it? Crikey, it's Big Mikey. It, you cannot play Werner after what he did against Cor- I Even if he had the same team and just swap Werner for Son as he did it like for Brentford, I will be fuming. I don't know. It's just again, back your players. You got to get behind. But he's on loan. Do you know what yeah. I mean? I don't, I don't know. It's such a complicated thing because he's just uh, got. Uh, that, great anyway. to play Wilson Oliver, uh, wouldn't it? It would be. It would be uh, his first injury of his career comes that game two or whatever it is. Do you know what? Um, Apparently though, he's not going to be out for as long as they thought. No, it's, it's just October, isn't it? So it's just October, like, an international about a month, break. Plus so we got international. He's break, not going to yeah. miss actually that many games. No, no. Um, well, so what? What do you reckon? Of, actually, before we do that, before we just do the squat score, like uh, prediction. What? Um, what were your quick like quickly? Because we it's been going on quite a while this point actually. Hmm. Um, but it, I mean, I've, I've loved it. But um, I've loved, I've loved it what was your what were your thoughts on like the fan forum as a whole thing? Because uh, there was a lot of like mixed opinions. Yeah, um, and uh, and I think. Is it healthy or informative, or is it a bit filtered down a bit, a bit propagandary? I, 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 I last year I was all for it because we were yeah. winning the league at that point. We were I like, watched oh, I watched Daniel it about three times. Play. We've got our play, of- mate. <laughs> <laughs> we got our ton of bad. Levy's making jokes about Madison driving a red car this year. It's a little bit less, oh, yeah. a little bit more doomy and gloomy, and everyone's like. Daniel Levy's like, yeah, I'm not really like fussed about um, being criticised. It just makes it just it yeah, just that, drives me. That was Fuck a off. mental thing to say. Yeah. Like, and to, to an extent, I think that 
with some of the, obviously he got asked about his achievements, didn't he? It was like ranked his top three achievements, and it was getting to a Champions League final, opening the stadium, and signing good players or something like so wishy washy and vague. Um, part of me thinks good players. <laughs> yeah, it was literally something like that. It was like part of me, part of me thinks, well, what do you expect him to say? I think it would be nice if he mentioned the fucking trophy that we won in his um, under, under his uh, tutelage. You think he would be proud of that, considering no, that's the thing that we get battered for the most as a club from our own fans as well as the media for not winning a trophy. Yeah. Um, so that, again, part of me thinks, well, what do you expect him to say? But the the thing about the criticism is just so tone deaf, isn't it? Like, why on earth would you come out and say that actually, yeah, no, it doesn't really affect me. I, I kind of just ignore it. The criticism from the fans, it makes me want to be more successful. And it's just like, come on, mate. But like, they... he, there's he's undoubtedly been a good chairman to Spurs. I don't look, I in terms of what he's done to set this club, club off. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. But, you know, well, it's interesting that the Stavely stuff's popped up again. And I feel like I've always been yeah. of, the, of the thinking that if we can get, I wouldn't necessarily want to get Levy to leave, but minority ownership, I think, would be a good, would be good for Tottenham. Levy yeah. can carry on handling the fucking hotel and all that shit and being a good businessman that he is and growing the club financially and economically. But basically, you want you want Stavely or someone to come in and just basically be able to take advantage of the the PSR situation we find ourselves yeah. in and pump in the money yeah. and we go and win the league. But yeah, I, it, I thought it was just I, th- I think the thing as a whole it's a bit because it's clear they cherry pick the people that go, isn't it? You're not gonna and that's a good thing because you're not gonna have you're not gonna have people that are like gonna fucking storm on the stage and start punching Daniel Levy's lights out at the event. Are you going? <laughs> you're a cunt, Levy, and all this like. Yeah, out of our club because it could it'd be a farce. It would be even more farcical than people perceive it to be now. Like people getting irritated about the fact that Son Heung Min said Ben Davis is Tottenham's best ever player. Which question he <laughs> From got a little asked, kid. He got asked by a child, exactly. And because he's his best mate and he's been a brilliant servant to Spurs that people could sort of forget about. People it's like, what do you want him to say? Jimmy Greaves, a player that he sort of weren't even fucking alive. You know, like I think you did you say that to me? Was that you that said that? Have I just nicked your not Jimmy Greaves, that. No, oh, so who's your... So no, it's... That. But I know people are going to be like, that's what's fucking wrong with the mentality at a club. Yeah, exactly. There were. Like, there were. There were people that were saying that. Like, it's just... But I do think as a whole, I think it's know. a bit of a waste of time. Because it's... Don't get me wrong. It's very it's, PR generated, isn't it? 100%. And it's... They, it, they know the questions before... And look, uh, they, they've practiced... They probably practice before yeah, and, as well. And also, Levy like, got asked... Mirror. Yeah, and also, Levy got asked questions that he... Um, would have found difficult to answer, and we got answers and about the, the you know the, about the um, season ticket prices for seniors and all that kind of stuff. And look, he basically said that it's a, it's a it, we're pausing it rather than stopping it, it, it to maximise the revenue for the club or something bollocks like that. But you know, at least he said that it's not a full a permanent thing in terms of the removing of the discount. I mean, so you know, he, he would have had questions that would that were not difficult to answer, but about difficult subjects that people have a have a yeah, um, yeah. an issue with but it's a bit like yeah it's a bit i don't know it, i think it, does it do does it do more good than it's like i think people are starting to see through it i think it's either there to see through it or to be like huh yeah, we only did nice. it really the and, first and, time we only done it for the first time in ages last year wasn't it i don't remember us doing it in eight, yeah. or before that I, I don't think it should be a yearly thing because then people are going to be like this is just the time for just i, I think when it's every once in a while and i, I think it is more prominent i think in and and people actually take it seriously a little bit more than every year because it almost becomes just an event does yeah. Daniel Levy probably does Daniel Levy make people pay to do, to go? No, no, no. You apply. I apply. Oh, I didn't get it. Surprised by that. I, oh, I didn't get it. But they definitely, they definitely want. <laughs> would, would you have punched Levy up? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I, uh, they, this is your they, moment. They will hundred percent like vet people's social media and stuff. Like that. My mate went last year. My mate George went last. Oh, really? Year. Oh, nice yeah. one. They will one hundred percent like vet people's social media and all that kind of stuff because they're not going to want fucking yeah. clowns that are going to go there and. They're not going to have like people that the purple and gold lot there, are they? Because it would just become they would it become a mess. Like it just become very. They, you could argue that's not fair representation because it's probably not. But again, you can understand why they do it. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they would, <laughs> purple and gold would do the exact thing of just stop oil. They just start throwing purple and gold, purple and yellow paint at yeah. at, at Levy and shit, or into... like just come pull other buckets on Andrew's shoes and shit. <laughs> yeah, I don't, they, it would, they it would turn into a farce. It, you know, it turn yeah, into a farce. Yeah, yeah. So it's not really like. Yeah, no, nah, no. Nah. I'm not very. I don't really care for for it to be honest. I'm bit. I'm not gonna be like. Oh, it's such fucking. Bro- I don't. I don't care. Like if people like it, they like it. If people I'll take like, it, if, it. don't pay attention to it. If if you don't. But the quotes. What Levy said was very. It, it, it was very disattached to what fans want him to say and want him to yeah. believe. And and I think it, I think that's what's frustrating because it's just like he's never gonna change. He, that's his priority. He's got his priorities. His, his financial gain, at the end of the day, and that's why people were so against him. But. He he has done a lot to to grow this club and be where we are. It's just that pushing to the final step isn't really a necessity for him. But it is for Ange. So yeah, all right, it is for every manager that comes in. But I don't know. It's it's. It, I'm not too fussed about. I'm not too fussed about uh, the fan forum to be honest. I don't care go. too much about it. Um, so, what's so your so I'm gonna take up, isn't it? Really? Yeah, it's just it is what it is. If you like it, you like it. The quotes are interesting. To take things with a pinch of salt. I think they're more but, interesting. Um, it's always more. You always like people want to ask Levy the questions, but and also like you hear from Ange a lot of the time anyway. It's like the questions that Ange is going to get asked yeah. is stuff that's going to get asked by the media. So it's yeah, a bit, exactly. Yeah, exactly. It's a bit redundant. Yeah. It's more Levy's. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like Ange um, might as well not what, be there. Yeah, that's true. I, I don't mean like I'd prefer it if he was there, but you know what I mean. It's like, who the fuck would go to a conference? So just Daniel Levy, It'd be a ball fest, wouldn't it? It Actually, yeah, it might be interesting. But then Son's there looking like pretty, and just there, they're, they're, they're waving away. Everyone's happy. Yeah. Um, Daniel Levy answers a couple of questions. I don't know. It's uh, yeah. But um, what do you think the score's going to be a carabag? We're both going. Yeah. Do you think they're and doing? We're going to miss fucking Europa League game. No. Whoa. Sing with me now. Whoa. 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 That's beautiful, mate. We haven't done that in a while. Actually. We're gonna have to. I mean, um, we're, not, we're not sitting together, but we'll we'll have to find each other in the ground and the just end. stand. <laughs> yeah. Did you know me and Ben have never actually met? No, we haven't. Might be the first time. Me and Ben heard, have though. never met. No, mate. I don't know. We actually have uh, technically, but we not really. I'm pretty sure I've I've there's a we've there, we've stood next to each other at a Jaffin event, but yeah. there's a, I'm pretty sure that I've tapped you on the arm and said sorry, mate, and like as I was squeezing past you. <laughs> yeah. But. The, but I don't think we've ever actually, we've never like had it's so weird isn't it it is weird I mean the chemistry for people two people that haven't met is kind of off the charts yeah yeah but I'm kind of I'm kind of nervous if we ever do meet which we're going to meet yeah. but like yeah. how we dap up and shit I'll, I'll overthink just the just the dap up so I mean, no, like, me, handshake after. I mean me and Seth haven't met either we're supposed to meet really Saturday but he's fucking running late to the game wasn't he uh, he'll be there on Thursday it. to be fair really? as well yeah Triple dap up the daring and like doing dap, dap alumni up, group hug, yeah, because he's the only <laughs> other person we've ever had on the podcast, <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, nah, um, yeah, we will be there, we will be yeah. there. Three, what do you think school's gonna be there, mate? Three nil, three nil, yeah, three nil, fucking seven. I reckon Lancashire goal off the bench, nil. you know. Oh, yeah, mate, he has to get minutes, he has yeah. to, surely. Even more will get minutes year. 100%. They'll get Tyrus half Hall, hour maybe. Because he'll want to manage. I think Solanke will start, but he want to. He want to. He want to manage Solanke. So, sixty minutes yeah, he comes true. off. Big Willie comes on, and uh, he Big has his Harry Kane esque Europa League run. Big Willie a... comes on. Big Willie. Big Willie comes. What do you? <laughs> what do you mean by I, that? I don't think. I don't think. Um, Alistair Gold's eligible to play in the Europa League. Right? <laughs> <laughs> that was one of our first. <laughs> Like jokes, is it about, about the bloke on this morning? If anyone, if anyone has listened to, if anyone's been listening to us since the start, which was in March, you'll know what we're talking about. Alistair, yeah. Big Willie, um, <laughs> love what you do, Alistair. Love what you do. Yeah, we love you, Alistair. Yeah, <laughs> your wife loves you too. Yeah, um, I bet she. The, uh... <laughs> um. Yeah, for context, the guy that went on this morning, it looked like a B Tech Alistair Gold, but he had the biggest dick in the in the UK. And I was like, for the first, I actually thought it was him for the first time. And I was going to be like, yeah, like stick that in your fucking trophy cabinet. Yeah. <laughs> biggest dick um, in the UK for your your journalist who writes some football. Uh, London. You'll never see that. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, I think I think I don't know the score, but I just want to see. Goals. I, I want a stress-free game where we play the youth, but it never is yeah. that with Europe League. So I want to sit there but... in my seat on Thursday like this. Just sit there like yeah. this. Feet up over the yeah. top. You've just your feet resting on the yeah. person in front of your shoulders. Yeah. Just... Sorry. Yeah. Sorry. And, sorry, and right. your legs are pretty long, so maybe the other people in the in the, the in two the rows in front. Of them. That's what I want to yeah. say. <laughs> right. yeah. Just like with my feet don't even reach the floor when I'm sat. I suppose. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the there swinging yeah. my legs. <laughs> When I when I stand up at the game when we've got an attack, I jump. Yeah, you're like jump up <laughs> if you hate us. <laughs> My dad puts me on his shoulders. Yeah. Yeah, jump up. Yeah, Can you see well? Can you see? <laughs> um, mm. yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to it, mate. I'm, I'm yeah, buzzing. I've missed the Europa League in a in a weird way. Obviously, me too. rather Champions League, but this I'm is the chance it. to see. This is what we were saying for yeah. for ages last season. This is a chance to see the the young lads, and and this is where the progress sort of. It's, it's it's you can fast track a process a little bit in co co competitions like this because you're Agreed. giving players exposure and and the, and the time to play and in meaningful games as well. Yeah, 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 yeah. Ben, mate, you've been a legend. Before we end, do you want to bring that thing about Jim? I, yeah. I was going to say, um, the the subscribe like the comments. I, I'm really sorry. I've been all over the place. I didn't really get back to the comments. I want to, but I feel like it's. I, I, I'll do that as well, but um, yeah, there's, it's been uh, the, all the time. love has been incredible. Yeah, yeah it's been it's been a bit messy, but um, yeah, I, I, the comments keep them coming because they're so amazing and and they mean so much to us. And yeah, like, comment, and subscribe if you if you haven't already, and if you if you enjoy the content. But um, and yeah. thanks for sticking up with us as well. I mean, I loved it. I could talk all day with you, Ben, but yeah, it's been like an hour and forty minutes, 40 minutes. or something like that. I, I, yeah, yeah. And I, I thought I was meant to be doing another podcast, but I don't think me and Flav are doing it anymore. We were going to talk about, okay. we were going to do a half hour sort of podcast on the fans forum, but if that comes out, then yeah. listen to the lab. We'll do another half hour then? <laughs> yeah, fuck it. <laughs> we'll take this to, we'll take puppies to two hours. Um, I'm not sure we can do that, but if, it, if that comes out, then listen to that. But um, yeah. yeah, so um, Jim, who launched Oso Spurs, another really good podcast, very positive, very good people to go on that. Basically, <clears throat> Jim, um, he posted th this on Twitter the other day and um, I want to make sure I retweet and stuff after this because they've set up a just giving basically. I think they've reached their target now, but basically Jim, um, and he talked about it on the podcast last night. Basically Jim got, um, he was diagnosed with cancer. I think it was a few years ago or maybe last year. I, can't, I don't actually know the timeline of it. Basically on the day before his wedding and his life completely changed, turned upside down um, and was in a really dark bad place and he talks about the fact that <clears throat> one of the one of the ways that he kind of got back in kind of and you know kind of got to the point where the idea of almost taking his own life wasn't something that he was scared about and you know thought about doing it and he said that one of the things that kind of got him back into you know um out of that mindset almost in a way was the fighting cock when the kind of the camaraderie around that and i think he, he talked about going to a um one of the watch alongs that they do uh the live podcast and then watch the game and over time he uh yeah treatment worked got better rescheduled the wedding um and had he had a son which is great stuff um oh, he then founded the podcast off the back of that because he wanted a kind of space to you know almost kind of doing himself like the 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 um almost like I think the negativity around Spurs at that time, there was so much of it where I think the thing that had almost became a bit of an escape for him became something that was just incredibly draining, you know. Yeah. The idea of an escape the escapism was gone. So he created the podcast off the back of that. Um is a very, I did it last night. Dees, Johnny, uh I was on with I don't think I was on with Johnny actually. Uh, and Sai uh and Jim obviously were great. Very positive, very level headed just a good fun discussion. Um, mm -hmm. And they, uh, La he spoke about meeting someone. Um, it's an account called Cherry's Talking, who basically are a support group for Bournemouth fans um, who essentially they set up like a support group for Bournemouth fans who potentially struggle with their mental health. Um, and it's just a Twitter account oh, that's incredible. where people could go if they just didn't feel like they could talk about stuff or just want to talk about football to get away from things and, you know, almost just yeah. as a, you know, you could reach a, 
hand out and just say, like, I feel like I'm struggling a bit at the moment. Just, you know, almost anonymously because you're not talking to someone that you know or you're not talking to a partner or someone like that people might struggle with. So essentially, long story short, as, as especially off the back of Jim also lost his brother-in-law to suicide as well. Um, he basically, they've almost set up, they've, they're setting up their own version basically of what Talking Cherries does or Cherries Talking does where basically an outlet for Spurs fans to to go to if you feel like you're struggling, if you feel like you need to talk, if you feel like you just want a bit of a distraction and to talk about football, they're setting up their own version of that for Spurs, which is great. And I think the goal is to That's like amazing. almost have one for every Premier League club. Um, so they've basically, they've set up a Just Giving page. I think they've actually reached their target, which is great because the, the four of the guys on the podcast, it, it costs money to get them um, basically trained, like, as, uh, like mental health trained in terms of dealing with that. Like you have to be, obviously trained in mental health to be able to have those conversations and um, when it comes to suicide prevention and stuff like that, obviously. So they have to do that. They've smashed their just given target. They're on, I think it costs 250 quid each for them to get trained. Um, and they're on, and there's four of them and they're on just under two grand, which is amazing. So they've doubled wow. what they need, but still, if you've got any money spare, I, I'm, I need to share it on Twitter. And I'm sure a lot of people have probably seen it anyway, but um, it's such an amazing thing for someone to do that off their own back to kind of create that support network yeah. for, you know, because mental health men's, you know, people, men suffer in science all the time when it comes to their mental health and you don't ever want it to get to a point where, you know, you, something happens and you wish, well, what could we have done? So yeah, it's just an outlet. I, I, um, I'm sure there's more details about it on their account. There's something that they're getting set up, which is great. So um big shout out to jim for that because it's really good really good stuff really powerful stuff and i think it's something that you know everyone needs everyone needs you know that everyone needs an outlet if they feel like they can't talk to some to people or whether it's people they know or whoever so go and oh, i'm going to share that on and we'll yeah, share it on the Darren doing page as well so um yeah great yeah. stuff from jim well, last one know. yeah well that's amazing that's amazing yeah um yeah perfect way to end the pod as well yeah ben mate thank you for for today um oh i was gonna say ask i mean fucking hell i was about to say ask <laughs> if they want oh, <laughs> i was reading what i'm telling myself to do on <laughs> on the run <laughs> ask, ask if, they, if want... they want game reactions like <laughs> straight after games <laughs> so i chokes on dt really <laughs> what's that all about <laughs> um, don't need that uh, <laughs> uh yeah, if you want game reactions, I'm this one thing to do, and I think we will do it. But let us know if you do want this. Um, yeah, if you want game reactions straight after the game, we'll get people on. Um, yeah, it's a good way to get other people involved and get other people on as well. Get, I, I like, yeah, I'm, exactly. at, I'm at games a lot of the time, so I might not be able to be involved, but yeah, you get to yeah. hear from different people and you know, and try and make it interacting. Work, and yeah, and 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 that could be another way of ch the channel growing, but yeah, and yeah. also. Spread the channel as well to friends you think you like it, and, and spread the love. yeah, I think it could be a big season for Spurs and and for the pod because obviously it's quite a new, a new pod. So yeah. everyone, thanks so much for the love. Thanks for listening. Um, if you're with us after an hour and forty five minutes, respect. Fucking hell, fair play. Total respect. 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 Respect, respect. respect goes out. Respect. To respect. Respect, man. Um, legends. Up Spurs. Ben, catch you later, mate. Up the Spurs. Quiz, quiz, fucking quiz, quiz, quiz. do Carabag yeah, as well. Carabag, you fucking little cunt. Fuck off. Fuck, Fuck off. off.